all right, you two bits, Mr. Mean coming at you, trying out this new YouTube go live thing. Uh, I should have put my Nerds International t-shirt up in the back, and I didn't. I apologize. I'll, much love to my bro brothers and sisters over at Nerds International. Uh, my camera's off here. It's driving me nuts. Turn it. What do I got to do? There's too many little parts for Mr. Me. Uh, but to be honest, it is just way easier to do this uh, Google Go Live thing, uh, uh, YouTube Go Live, instead of setting up the software and then importing stuff and getting it to render. And, you know, I like to put my little Nerds International uh, uh, little video header in there where it goes, Nerds! It's funny and I like it. And uh, the guys over at Nerds International have been awesome. They've got a lot of great shows. Go check them out. They've got a G Plus page where you can find a list of all the channels that are on our uh, Nerds International uh, consortium. We're over to take out the world. Take out the world? We'll buy the world a Coke and tell them to shut the fuck up. Obviously, this is not work-friendly, uh, so if you're watching, you should probably, uh, at work, you should probably turn it down or turn it off so you don't get in troubles, because it's not my fault. I'm going to turn this chat off here if I can. Uh, we don't need the chat. Nope. I guess I don't have a choice. Chat stays up. It is the way it is. Oh, well. Oh, I can pop the chat out, and then I can minimize it. Nice. I still can't make my page bigger. We're still learning. This is the first time I've used this. So uh, I didn't post anything. Nobody knows I'm live right now. If someone's watching, great. Um, but a couple of weeks ago, I did a review of uh, Coriolis, uh, The Third Horizon. And I, I had mentioned that I hadn't got a chance to play it. Let me get my damn microphone closer. I'm an idiot. Hopefully, you guys can hear me better. Uh, luckily, I have a pretty uh, resonant voice that carries. So hopefully, you guys can hear me okay. If you missed all the beginning, don't worry. It wasn't super important. Just much love to my Nerds International brothers. And I'm using the YouTube uh, stream now, live cam, whatever it's called, to, to do this um, instead of doing it through my software and editing it and everything. And it just it takes hours and we've got some people coming by to look at stuff and it's uh, i'm busy you know how it is but uh a couple weeks ago i did a uh, a review of Coriolis, uh, a pre-play review where i was talking about it um and i said i had mentioned that i hadn't yet got a chance to play it and i wanted to uh Go ahead and give you guys an after play report i ran this last weekend for uh my gaming group here in beaumont um and much fun was had um i gotta give a huge huge thank you to uh joshua uh, another fellow gm extraordinaire he hooked me up with the coriolis gm screen it was so funny because he's he's probably worse than i am he backed i guess he backed this as a kickstarter and it showed up he didn't remember backing it <laughs> And he said it's a game he's never going to run. I, on the other hand, think that this could easily become one of my go-to games. I really, really enjoyed the system. But we'll get into that a little bit more later. But here's the GM screen. And for once, a GM screen and that's full of very, very useful information. Um, there's, uh, let me put my spectacles on here. Sorry if you heard my phone go off. I'm, I guess I'm a popular guy. We got the critical wound chart on the on the left side. We've got an NPC generator, which I got to tell you, pretty freaking awesome. Uh, some actions and how much action points they cost. Uh, range, range attacks, sneak attacks, difficulty, levels of success. And on the far right panel, we have armor and shields, common uh, covers, things that you can use for covers, you know, a door. Uh, inner wall, that kind of thing, uh, ranged weapons, and then melee weapons. And that's all that's in here. And then on the back, it's just art uh, with the word Coriolis right down there. So um, in my opinion, that ship is super freaking cool. Um, in my opinion, an excellent GM screen. Um, just, the, just for the facts of having the uh, NPC name generator on there was phenomenal. Um, that, I, I can't say enough good things about that. Uh so uh, I ran them through a little generic adventure called the Coriolis Peril, and it was a generic adventure 
is a one sheet. I downloaded it off Modifius' site. You can buy this game in PDF or hardback from modifius.com. Um, I, I fully support Modifius. I think they're a great company, but I would get it from drive through RPG. Um, as much as I want to support Modifius, if you're here in the States, the shipping is going to kill you. Uh, now one of the ways around that is Modifius is really good about like every holiday, every, any kind of special occasion, they'll put up like a 25% off, uh, discount code. Um, especially if you sign up for their email, um, and they have a rewards program where if you run demos or you support their games in any way, shape or form, you get points and you can turn those points into, uh, discounts. Um, so if you can't do that or you don't want to do any of that, then I recommend buying off a drive through RPG because you don't have to pay for that shipping. It's going to, you know, drive through RPG has got it built in there. Uh, some of the games that Modifius supports, you can find on amazon.com as well. But as always, the best place to buy any of your games is from your favorite local game store. These guys are you almost always starving uh, entrepreneurs and, uh, it helps them make a buck, puts food on their table, and you're supporting your local game community. And here's the other thing. If you're going to order it online, you're going to have to wait for it, unless it's Amazon Prime. But even still, you got to wait two days for Amazon Prime. Go to your local game store. Ask them to order it for you. You'll get it in a week, um, and you'll have it. And you've supported your local game store, and maybe you bring other people's attention to it. Because I can tell you for a fact I have gone in the game store and saw something sitting on the back counter or on a table and the person in the store says, Oh, that's a special order for somebody. I didn't know anything, what it was or whatever game it was. And I'm like, Ooh, and then can I look at it? And they'll let me look at it. And I'll say, you know what? Order me one. So you're helping to promote your favorite local game store and giving them some business. And, uh, but if you can't do that drive through, if you can wait the time or money is no object, you lucky some bitches. Go ahead and order directly from Modifius. But anyway, back to the review. I downloaded the Coriolis Effect uh, right off of... Um, I Actually, I got this off a of drive through RPG. It was free. It is just a one, one page. It's generic. It's not specific to any game system, uh, which is weird because it was in the Coriolis section, which I found weird, but I guess maybe because of the name. Um, and so... They're, the only mechanics on here are the only things that you have to change is the money that you get paid. The players get paid for the mission because in Coriolis, the money is is referred to as Burr, B I R R. Um, and in here, they just, I think they just say credits. Uh, so you got to just remember that little nuance. And then the uh, monster that attacks the players uh, in the adventure, you have to convert it. I found an apl applicable creature that worked really well for the planet that I had based it on. Um, and so I made a bunch of notes on the back and then I just, I went from there. I ran it. It was a one shot adventure. We played for about, I don't know, four, four and a half, five hours. We also made characters, which was pretty cool. Um, so it's very easy to make characters. It's a points di distribution system. You start out with an X amount of points and then you take those points and you distribute them among your attributes and your abilities. And it went really well from there. Uh, here is a blank character sheet. I recommend if you're a first-time GM, have a copy of this because the skills don't like any any different type RPG, especially if you run a different, a lot of different kinds. You know, an, a, a stealth check. You know, you would think, oh, D and D, it's a, it's a make make a stealth check. Well, in this game, it's not stealth; it's uh, uh, infiltration. You know, and so you, instead of saying make a stealth check, you want to make sure you use the right terminology so your players aren't looking on their sheet going, where the fuck is stealth? And it, it's nowhere on here. Um, so uh, very cool sheet, very well laid out, very easy. It's a two-page sheet, again, downloaded off of drive through RPG or, you know, various other sources. I'm sure it's out there on the web somewhere. But what I wanted to get into is the meat of this. Uh, in my initial review, I told you about the book. I showed you some of the art. Uh, I'm a big fan of the art. It's very consistent. Um, it's very kind of dark. Uh, the game is very much Arabian Nights in space. So everything has very much an, an Arabic feel to it. Uh, you know, you go into a lounge, it's covered with, in smoke. Uh, and, you know, you'll see a hookah in the middle of the floor and every, with all these tubes coming off and everybody's smoking off of it. So, or, or maybe several hookahs and, and uh, the clothing type of Arabic you can describe. So it's very cool in this game. I mean, even the guys on the front kind of have that, 
you know, they're wearing kind of the baggy pants and the wraps around the head and, you know, the big helmets. And so the game really does a great job of helping you as a GM and a player immerse yourself in the setting. The mechanics. It's a, basically a stat and a skill creates a dice pool. You're looking for sixes, nothing else. Well, ones, ones are crits. If you roll all ones with no successes, you foobard. I get to do something horrible to you. Yay me. Um, uh, but if it, literally nine out of 10 times, you only need one success. If you get multiple successes, you get multiple sixes, it usually equates to you've done the task faster. You've done it with more panache. You've uh, did more damage in combat or you, you've hit a, a, a good spot. You were aiming for a spot. The way uh, modifiers, pluses and minuses go is they subtract or add dice to your dice pool. So if you have a dice pool of seven dice and I say, you're, and you're trying to make an infiltration test, but the guard is hyped up on some drugs and he's very alert or he just came on watch, normally that would just be a roll off between his uh, observation and your infiltration. But I might give you a minus two dice penalty because it's bright lights and the guard is very observant because he's hyped up on some drugs, uh, which very prominent in this system. They make a point to use drugs. They're good, which no kids don't use drugs. Drugs are bad. But in this game, and they do have consequences in the game, but I don't want to get sidetracked. So now you have that two dice penalty off of your seven. So you roll four dice. The guard would roll his observation and you would compare sixes. If I get more, if you get more sixes than my guard, you succeed. If the guard gets more than you, you failed, you get spotted and something bad happens or combat ensues or the guard will halt who goes there, you know, that kind of thing. Or he may just start shooting. It depends. Um, damage works out really well as well. Um, it's pretty easy. To, they want you, the game, it, it almost begs you to chuck a lot of dice which normally, and it's a D6 based system, which I said in my initial review, I'm not a fan of D6 dice. I don't like Shadowrun. I'm rolling too many dice. I don't like the way it works. I don't like the mechanic. Love the world, don't like the mechanics. In this game, loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, you're usually not chucking more than seven to 10 dice or five to 10 dice on average. You may chuck a few more if you got some awesome bonuses and things like that. But for the most part, five to 10 dice, I think I think one player threw 11 dice, which was the big dice pool of the night. But uh, he had a whole bunch of, uh, of advantages and things like that. So it worked out really well to their advantage. Um, but the mechanics are pretty solid. Uh, you get dice. Uh, so damage, uh, obviously, you, your weapon will do X amount of dice. Um, and then you'll add those dice. You'll roll those dice. And then the player can make a defense check. Um, where they can try to use cover if they have cover or just their basic armor, they'll pick up that many dice and they'll roll those dice. All of their successes will subtract from your damage successes. And in, if there's anything left over, they'll take that many wounds. If there's nothing left over, they've absorbed it all. So cover is very important. The machine gun in this game is pretty, it's a carbine. Uh, they call it a Vulcan and it's pretty gnarly. It does a decent amount of damage. Um, we rolled a lot of crits. The nice thing is you don't have to take the crits, if I remember correctly. You can just take the damage. So if you're fighting a mook or you're fighting someone of inconsequence, you can just do a buttload of damage to them and kill them. If you're fighting a named character, you want those crits. The crits are pretty awesome. You roll crits on two six-sided dice. So you start with 11, then 12, 13. And it goes all the way up to a 66 uh, in increments of what you would roll on a, on a D, 2D6. So you have, you know, 66 possibilities of, of crits. And some of them are pretty gnarly. Obviously, if you roll a 66, I think it's a 62 or above, they're pretty much dead. My 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 wife has been, we got somebody coming to look at our couch. Uh, yeah, if you roll a 66, it's a, a, a crushed skull. If you have bonuses and it takes you over a 66, uh, it's just bad. Um, but for the most part, I believe pierced heart is a 65 severed aorta is a 64 severed jugular. So yeah, it just, it doesn't get really much better. Even at an 11, your wind, wind is knocked out of you. You're stunned for one turn at a 12. You're disoriented. You're stunned for one turn and it just gets worse from there. So you really want the game really focuses you on using those crits. Um, 
and it, it's just really cool. Um, you can take out a really the monster they were fighting. It got the surprise on it. it was super stealthy. It could mask its heat signature because that's what it did because they live on this planet where it's always hot, even on the cool side of the planet. Think crematorium from Riddick. If you've seen that movie, that's the planet basically, except it doesn't rotate. It stays fixed. Um, and they're on the dark side of the planet, which is still super fucking hot. And so the creature was able to mask its heat signature. The players did great. I, I had six, seven players. Everybody manned a, a spot on the ship. That's another part. Well, um, in a lot of games, if you're like a, in, in, in Shadowrun, when you're doing a piloting thing or you're doing like a net job where the net runner is, is doing his thing, the rest of the players that aren't a net runner sit there with their thumbs up their asses. There's not a whole lot for them to do, and the GM has to come back to them. You have to wait for a pause in the action or the scene for the net runner. Then you have to go to the other players, and then you have to come back. In Coriolis, you don't have to do that. Every player takes up a position on the ship because uh, part of character creation is choosing a theme, choosing um, a, a group motif, and then you pick a ship uh, that's based on your your uh, job. You know, are you a mercenary? Are you agents for something? Are you freelancers? Are you military? Are you uh, free traders? That kind of thing. And so the nice part is you you pick a ship that is specific to that type of uh, task that your your player group is, is going to be performing in and you get that type of ship and then the players have to nominate who's going to man what positions and there's several different careers that get pilot so it's usually not a problem someone can be the pilot there's if you've got a large group i had i think six or eight players total um i had a back i had two backup pilots so i had the primary pilot who she played a pilot um, and I had two other people that could actually fly the ship if if the shit hit the fan and the pilot got killed. What was nice is the young lady that was playing the pilot had never played a role-playing game. And she dived into this. Um, she did an awesome job. I believe her name was Olivia. Um, and she was a first-time gamer. Her dad plays in our D&D group. Her dad was there with Coriolis. And he just wanted some more bonding time with his daughter. And she had a blast. And I, I tried to give her some limelight. She made some awesome piloting roles. She did really well. And she totally played a pilot. I mean, she did She did wash from uh, Serenity. She never left the ship. And I'm like, oh, yeah, they're going. Are you going with them? Nope. Staying on the ship. She was all about being the pilot. And she was totally cool with it. Um, but yet when I put the scenes on her, she, she flourished. And, you know, she articulated. And she engaged. And it was really cool. So I, I hope she had as much fun playing as I did for GMing for her. Cause I think she did an excellent job. Um, everybody else was pretty much longtime players. Uh, her dad's pretty much only a D and D player and various flavors of D and D. So he had never played something like this. So he really enjoyed it as well. So uh, that's a testament to the game as well. Um, it, it, the mechanics are smooth. Everybody picked up on it really quick. Um, I, I just I want to overall say very positive, very easy game to get into. I mean, it's a tome, but it's about average for your your standard RPG, and uh, it it played really well. It uh, it it was smooth. The mechanics were easy. Um, it really really gave you that sense of God. I want to roll a bunch of dice, which I think games that do that are fun. D and D does that. You know, when you when you like, I'm playing a monk in our local D and D game, and man as I level and, and Joshua, who's our GM says, Oh, you know, and, you know, make sure you read up on your character because you can do X, Y, Z now. And I'm like, Ooh, and I get more dice to roll and man, it's just, it's, it's awesome. And so any game that gives you that, that excitement. And even as a GM, it gave me excitement because I get darkness points. Um, because in this game, when you travel in space, you go in between for lack of a better word, uh, reality. And that's where the bad things lie. And uh, they can manifest. And it didn't really come out so much in this in the game we played because it was kind of a, a one shot and go to point from point A to point B. But in a campaign, you can definitely when they start making trips to go to various planets or travel to other sectors of, of the known universe, you can really just throw some crazy shit at them. And there's there's a, a bestiary in here. It's enough to get you by enough of different kind of monsters to do different things and or NPCs, uh, brigands, pirates, that kind of thing. Um, the book is laid out pretty well. There's, there's a little bit of, eh, um, but they, they, they do a good job. The, the index, um, 
is okay. The, the table of contents is fine. It breaks it down by chapter, breaks it down, you know, whatever you need to get into. It doesn't go into any great depth for the table of contents. The index, in my opinion, is a little bit light. Uh, I was like looking for sp certain drugs because uh, during character creation, certain characters got drugs and those drugs weren't in the, in the uh, index. So I had to go to the equipment section and then dig around in there. And then I think somebody, another player found it, but we took about two hours to make uh, characters. And that was, I, I want to say we had eight players, I think six to eight, six to eight players. I don't remember. Uh, I'm going to go with six. We had at least six players, maybe more. And we, we had two books. We had my book and Joshua's book and we were able to belt out characters. Everybody picked a template and then you fill it in. So character creation is a breeze. You can get it done in the first night. And you, if you've got, if your GM's got an adventure ready, you, you are good to play. You can play. You can, if you have a typical four hour session and you take two hours, you can get two hours of good gameplay. And depending on what your adventure is, I set this up, this adventure up for them. I embellished it a little bit, gave them some role-playing opportunities. They took it hook, line and sinker. Um, there was a lot of stealth and everything. It was just some cool shit. I really enjoyed it. Um, everybody's character did a good job uh danny the son of the person of john's whose house we play at he's 17 years old he did really well as well um uh joshua always always plays his character he doesn't always agree with my rules and how i run a game but uh he he did well uh and I, I hope he had fun. Uh, I enjoy running for him. He he keeps me on my toes uh, as GM. Uh, John and, and and Dorothy they they did great. So it was just a fun time. William kind of was our rules lawyer, not in a bad way. Uh, he kind of kept Joshua's book in his lap and corrected us when we made mistakes, uh, or he would look stuff up real quick. So it was a collaborative uh, effort by everybody because it's the first time we played the game, first time we've made characters. So we did our best. I'm sure we made a couple mistakes, but overall I got a feel for the game and I totally enjoyed it. Um, I, I really, really liked the game and I thought it was a lot of fun. The mechanics are smooth. And again, it's a game that wants you to roll dice. It wants you to chuck a bunch of dice and, and that's a good feeling. Anytime you can get into a game like that, you're excited about picking up dice to, to either do damage or make a, a, a infiltration roll. Uh, almost said stealth, uh, but anytime you can do that kind of stuff and, and feel empowered, um, the, I don't think any of the characters felt worthless or felt weak in their ability to get things done. I think everybody was empowered pretty well, um, which was a good thing. Uh, so if you're looking for a good, I hate to use this term, semi-hard sci-fi game, uh, this this could be the one. Uh, if, if you don't mind Arabic themes or, or Arabian nights in space kind of deal, um, this, this is definitely a good game. It definitely sets the setting. It sets the mood. Um, and the mechanics really flourish the game. Uh, character creation is a breeze. I, I think... I think if you're looking for a good sci-fi game, this will fill the bill. If you want to run Firefly, this would be uh, this would be a good game to do it in. I mean, you just change the Arabian theme to a Chinese because you know in Firefly everything's kind of that American Chinese mix mash, and they speak half Chinese, half English, that kind of thing, and a little bit of Russian. You could totally do that in this, but there is other nationalities in the game, uh, and and they go into a little bit of the history, go into a lot of the history. The book is is half history and then a, a portion of mechanics and then NPCs and then an adventure in the back. I did not run the adventure in the back um, just because I didn't have enough time to prep for it. Um, and I wanted to run some, just a quick one shot that we could play. The adventure in the back is a little bit longer. It's a good adventure. I'm, I'm not going to go into it. I did read it now, but I, I don't want to go too deep into it. So if you haven't picked up Coriolis and you're on the fence about it and you've watched my reviews, you know what my theme is or my taste is pretty much. I like just about anything. There's not too many bad RPGs. There are, but there's not too many that I don't like and I won't at least play once. And and if you've got the money, you got the 50, 60 bucks to drop. I don't even know what those costs. Oh, and by the way, it's free league publishing is who makes it. And it's Modifius who produce, uh, publishes it. Uh, free league is the ones who made the game. Uh, they have a blog. I believe they don't have an official website. A beautifully done book. It is organized pretty well. 
uh, and the mechanics make sense. Um, I'm sure there's an errata out there for it for some stuff, but I didn't I didn't find I didn't see the need for it. We didn't read any rules that we went what and I mean between the six of us, we've got a, no, a number of people that have all been GMs and have all run different various games. Joshua actually, since I've known him, has run a couple different games. Uh, so w- between us, we we have enough experience that if something was wonky, I think we would have caught it and went, no, that doesn't make sense. I think we caught everything. Um, it made, for the most part, it made sense, and we really enjoyed it. So like I said, if you're looking for a good uh, semi-dark, semi-hard, uh, f- uh space rpg uh this is a good one the, the combat mechanics are, are very good for space as well we didn't get into it because like i said the scenario didn't provide for it and i didn't want to make something but it was enjoyable nonetheless so again uh it's a buy in my book i think you should add this to your collection if you're a collector like me uh get it I wholeheartedly recommend getting the GM screen and the icon cards. They're a deck of cards. Uh, I have them as well. Joshua's awesome uh, and nice enough to give those to me. Um, And my guys in Duluth want me to run this when uh, I get there. So I'm pretty excited about that. And it's pretty neat that I'm moving to a community that has the same size. Duluth, Minnesota is the same size as Beaumont for the most part. Beaumont has one game store, technically. I mean, you could kind of count uh uh site uh cyber lords but they sell mostly cards like they, they've got a little section one shelf that has D D books and that's all they carry so i don't consider that a, a role-playing game store um duluth has three um and technically they have another one but it's kind of a hobby store but it does sell some role-playing stuff you can buy dice there you can buy grease markers and things like that so and the nice part is i have a built-in gaming group going there because my my buddy darren has his own group and so i'm sure that they're going to be happy to have another gm and i'm looking forward to running some games for them uh and i'm definitely going to run conan for them because i know they're gonna they're gonna want to play that so uh I think this is my last gaming session with my guys. Um, I'm a little sad. I'm a little bummed out. Uh, we'll be, uh, this will be my last D&D session. My monk is going to go out in a blaze of glory uh, or at least be retired from my play and maybe become an NPC character. Uh, I'm not sure. I if, if Joshua wants the character sheet, I'll give it to him. But uh, after this, we start making hardcore plans to move. Uh, we'll be in Duluth. We'll be on the road to Duluth on the 1st of May. Uh, which is a month away. It's what, 30, 31, 32 days away. Today's the 30th, 31st. Yeah. So tomorrow, I believe, is the first. Uh, so yeah, at the end of end of May, uh, end of April, we will we will be packing up and moving to Duluth. I'm gonna have a big garage sale uh, the last weekend in uh, April. If you're in the area, I'm gonna have some role playing stuff, some board game stuff. Uh, nothing amazing, but if you just want to pick up something for the kids. Come on out. We'll have a bunch of baby clothes. We'll have some of my clothes. I, I'm a big guy. I wear two uh, XL shirts, and I'm gonna have a bunch of T-shirts. And uh, my wife's gonna have some of her clothing. Uh, we're just gonna do a big garage sale because less is more, and the less we have to pay for to move, the more money we keep in our pocket. I've uh, been interviewing. The interviews have gone well. I've done two interviews so far for Duluth. They both went very well. I'm hoping I'll hear something back next week. So it would be really nice to go to Duluth and get a job right off the bat. And here's the sad part. I have applied for over, and this is sad, over 100 jobs since January. 100 jobs since January. I've had two interviews, two out of 100. That's pretty sad. Nobody here wants to hire, you know, and and they want to outsource and they want to, they want to pay. I mean, I interviewed one job, interview went smashing, job was perfect. It's a one man show. It's the kind of work I like to do. I asked him for the pay and he said, $14 an hour. And I looked at the guy and I said, sir, you understand that you're getting someone that has over 20 years of IT experience. And he was like, yeah. I said, you realize that's an insult, right? And he, I said, do you make, I mean, how long have you been in your job? And he said, he'd been in his job for 22 years. I said, do you make $14 an hour? And he got all offended. No. I said, so why would you expect me to come in and work for $14 an hour? Can you do IT? He said, no. 
I said, so you want $25 plus an hour worker, but you only want to pay them $14 an hour. And he just looked at me. I said, I think this interview is over. And I got up and I walked out because I was highly insulted. I mean, you, you can look at my resume and see. But anyway, I'm rambling about something that doesn't really matter. The fact is we're moving to Duluth to make a better life for ourselves. And uh, I'm going to miss all my Texas peeps. I love you guys. I'll still be creating videos. It's just going to be probably the next month is going to be very slim. This may be the last video I, I get to do just because of time constraints and work. But I'm on Discord. I'm going to work at my my current job until I'm giving my notice on the 13th of next month of April. And uh, they may fire me right then and there. They have a habit of doing that when people give their notice. But I don't want to be a dick and work up until the day I'm going to leave it and go, oh, by the way, today's my last day. And not say a word. Um, I think that's wrong. I have my own personal ethics that I want to keep intact. So I'm going to give my notice on the 13th. Hopefully they'll let me work up until the 29th, which I believe is the last day I want to work. It's a Friday, 28th, whatever. Um, if they don't and they fire me, I'll just sit back and collect unemployment. I don't, I don't have a problem with it um, because I can do that. And in Texas, unemployment is pretty good. And when I go to Duluth, I will qualify for unemployment because I'm moving states when I was unemployed and let go from my employer. So it's a win-win for me. So I hope they're stupid enough to uh, fire me on the spot. and. Uh, I'll kick back and I'll get my house ready and everything. And it'll make my life a lot easier if I don't have to work and I can focus on moving. But anyway, I thank all of you. I love each and every one of you. You guys have been awesome. The feedback is always awesome. Uh, and I appreciate all each and every one of you. I thank you for taking the 30 to an hour minutes out of your day to watch me ramble about stupid shit that doesn't mean anything, but it means something to me. And I thoroughly enjoy all the comments. I love getting comments when you guys post them. I love getting the thumbs up. I can see we've got eight people in the chat right now, which is awesome. I didn't expect that many in the chat, but that's super cool. Um, and you know what? I turned off chat. Let me see if anybody's posted anything. Ah, nobody's posted anything. Uh, oh, oh, wow. People did. Well, okay, well, hold on. Let's take a second here to go through these. Why can't I make this go away? All right, they need to. This is still experimental, by the way. Uh, let's see. Bill Lear's in here. Hey, Bill. Chupa's in here. Uh, let's see. Who else is in here? Destron 1201. Hey, man, how's it going? Uh, let's see. Redfield's in here. I believe Redfield is a Texan. Uh Let's see, Destron Villalier. There's a lot of people talking. All right, let's. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm new to this part, so I didn't know. Well, I knew it could do it. I just didn't know how it worked, and I got it out of my way. And I can't type, obviously. <laughs> and I'm in IT. Doesn't that make you feel safe? Um, let's see. Any Warhammer stuff? No, Destron. I won't be selling any of my Warhammer stuff, sadly. Um, I, I not a lot of RPG stuff is going to be in there. If it is RPG stuff, it's going to be uh, print on demand stuff that I just spiral bound and got printed. There'll be a couple role, uh, a couple board games uh, that you can see in the back. They see some moving boxes behind me. There's a star Wars box that's full of star Wars miniatures. Uh, I'm going to be getting rid of those because uh, uh, I just, I need stuff that I can get rid of. So Redfield is in Port Arthur. So cool. Uh, Chupa's in New York. Wow. Well, come on out for the garage sale, dude. Make a vacation of it. Uh, <laughs> good luck in Minnesota. Sorry, I never got to play with you guys. Maybe you, maybe, you, maybe you can make Gary Con. It's just a state away. Maybe we'll see. Uh, let's see. And then, uh, let's see. Torg. Somebody got the new Torg. Who was that? Redfield got the new Torg yesterday. I'd imagine you bought that at um, uh, uh, Bookstand because I Joshua texted me this morning and told me. They had it in stock. Simo Voluthian. Uh, Vaut, Valthelian. Ah, dude, I can't say your name. Simo. I can say Simo. Hello, is this a 2D20 or is it the same system as Mutant Year Zero? Unfortunately, Simo, I do not own Mutant, Mutant Year Zero. So I don't know what system that uses. I do know it's a D6 system. This is a is uses a multiple D6. It's a stat and a skill. That gives you a total number of dice to roll. You roll those dice, you're looking for sixes. So hopefully that clarifies and helps. 
Uh, Lou is on here. What did you think about the pacing of the story during combat scenes? I found the multiple uses of AP really slowed things down a bit. Really, Lou, uh, we didn't we didn't have that problem. Uh, and like I said, I was running for about six to eight people, if I remember correctly, and uh, well, it it didn't it didn't really run a problem. Uh, everybody pretty much had used their guns, which was two AP, uh, and they used one AP for movement, and we kind of kept it simple. We didn't get super depth into it. Uh, it was a very short combat because the players, like I said, there were six of them and they kind of strategically placed themselves, which was really well done. And they, uh, they foobarred. They killed my monster real quick. Uh, Simo says that it does sound like Mutant Year, year Zero, which it could be. Uh, uh, Destron1201 says, send me your address on Discord. I want to send you some fantasy if you don't already have it i don't know what fantasy is but sure um my email just for everybody i'll put it in chat actually there's my email that i use for my discord and everything so if you uh if any of you are uh rpg purveyors or you make stuff um feel free if you want me to do a review of it oh destron is tommy from tefra uh for those that don't know, I was going to run a Tefra game online through Discord, but unfortunately, we found out we were moving and uh, we were going to, you know, I just, I don't have the time to do it. So all that fun stuff. Um, I'm still going to be doing my reviews. Like I said, I'm still going to be trying to get people on the channel to do a chat. I'm hoping that I will get uh, Daniel Fox from Zweihander. Um, I think you can see it. By, uh, you probably can't see it. It's that big, thick book back there. Uh the Torg boxes on this side, and then of course Faith RPG uh, and Rifts, and then the Conan board game. Uh, if you guys ever get a chance to play that court Conan board game, it is freaking awesome. Um, uh, it's a really good. It's got, got some errata. Go download the errata and make sure. Um, it is 11:46, guys. I'm gonna have to call it. I've got people coming to look at some furniture um, and get that out of my house to make more room for boxes. Um, as again, I just want to say. Thanks, everyone. Uh, thanks for supporting me. Uh, like I said, there'll be more videos once we get settled in in Duluth. Maybe a couple videos, uh, you know, via my phone. I'm a, I'm a Nexus 6 guy. I love my big phone. Uh, might be videos via that way, so it won't be the best quality or the best audio, but I'll do the best I can. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do the best thing we can, man. But I'll be back. I won't be gone for long, and the reviews will keep coming. And uh, the guest on the channel will become, like I said, I want Daniel Fox. He's already agreed to be on the channel. Uh, I actually talked to one of the guys that knows the people in Germany that produced um, uh, the Genesis. And uh, so they're going to try and put me in touch with them and see if we can get a dialogue going and, and see if they can get on the channel and uh, talk about the Genesis. Uh, that's another cool game. Uh, look for it on PDF. Uh, there may be a couple of local stores that sell it. Uh, I haven't seen any, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. Uh, but anyway, uh, I just want to say a big thank you to the six, seven people, eight people that watched. Uh, I didn't expect anybody to be on here. I was just going to do a, a quick thing because, like I said, it's easier to stream this instead of setting up all my software and everything. So peace, love, and happiness, and uh, I'll catch you guys again. And as always, remember, Mr. Mean says, be nice. <laughs>